Hey friends, Sarah here. I think it's time for us to make some pizza. So it's very easy. Just get you a big bowl, a very big bowl, and it's got um, two and a half cups of all-purpose flour to start. Now get the biggest bowl that you can because I'm gonna show you how we can just knead everything all together in the bowl. And then we'll take some uh, salt, it's a teaspoon of salt. And now here's where you get to get fancy if you want to. So some people like to add some seasoning to their um, pizza dough as well. And I've done it many times and I like it. Um, if you wanna add some herbs of any kind or an Italian herb mix or something like that, you can add um, a tablespoon of herbs. Or if you want something more along the spice uh, line, you could add maybe uh, a teaspoon or a teaspoon and a half of garlic powder, something, you know, get creative. It's your pizza dough. I'm just going to be boring and plain today, so we'll not put those in today. Um, and you're going to need some sourdough starter, of course. So look at it, it's so happy. We'll just put a cup in. If you don't have a cup, it's all right. You know, just know that if you don't have uh, a full cup, if you want to use a half a cup, it just might take a little bit longer to, um, for the yeast to populate the dough. Not a big deal, just, makes, just takes more time. So we'll just add that in. And now uh, our dough is going to rest for about, about eight hours. So keep in mind of when you're starting to do this, when you want to have your pizza on the table. So right now it's noon for me, which is uh, a little later than I wanted it to be, but that's all right. And so I'm just gonna let this rest on the table for eight hours and then I get to making it. I'll probably be eating by nine o'clock at night, but hey, you know, sometimes you need a uh, late night pizza. So I've got a half a cup of water. I'll just pour that right in. And that's all we need. So I'm going to ditch my spatula and get my favorite utensil, a wooden spoon, and we're just gonna use the tail end of it. Okay, so just kind of swirl it around like you normally would, and you'll notice that it will become a ball up on the end of the, on the spoon handle. A little more leverage here. And you'll see it come together. Now we might need to add a little bit more water. Now we can, depending on, um, your the level of hydration in your sourdough starter we might need to add more water so for me it looks to be that way i'm not going to add it just quite yet but here's what i'm looking at it's kind of shaggy i want to put my hand in it first before i go get more water just squeaky off the end of it making sure your hands are clean of course and i'm just going to Squish the dough around, trying to get all those little dry bits grabbed in by the wetter bits. And now you see why I've got this nice big bowl. I like to keep um, my mess contained, and so this helps me to keep the, my space cleaner. So I've got a bowl, a bowl, a ball. And then I've also got some of these like shaggy bits and that tells me that I need a little bit more water. So that's fine. I'll just go fetch some more water. And we'll just add maybe a tablespoon at a time until everything comes together. Now, uh, speaking about the hydration of the sourdough starter, it doesn't really matter what your, you know, how much how thick or thin your sourdough starter is, as long as it's got, you know, the activity, a lot of bubbles, and it's doubling in size. And the most important thing to glean from this is to get to know what your bread is supposed to look like. So since this is not a high hydration dough, um, we have to knead it. So that's what I'm doing now. So just that little extra tablespoon has given us exactly what we need. So Everything is all right here now, and it's still a bit sticky to the touch. So what I'll do is I will knead it for about five to seven minutes or something rather like that. And then you'll notice how it has changed. So 
let me show you exactly what I mean by kneading. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be a specific technique. There are a million ways to knead bread, but the way I do it is in my bowl, I just push forward, pull it up, kind of fold it in half, and then turn it in half turn or quarter turn and then push again. So I'll show you what that looks like on the counter. You know, you can more, you are more than welcome to use um, both hands if, if that's what you feel most comfortable with. I just like to have one clean hand. Um, so but anyways, I'm pushing forward, pulling up, folding it over, turning it a quarter turn, pushing, folding, turning, pushing, folding, turning. Yeah. So again, if you want the two hands in there, you just, you just go at it, right? So, but the point is, is to knead it for about five to seven to 10 minutes, however long you want to knead it. Um, but what it's doing is it's not only incorporating a proper mix of the water inside of the flour, but you're also activating the gluten, which is what gives our bread that nice rise and nice chewy texture. And um, so I'll show you what that looks like after the five minutes have passed. All right, it's been about five minutes. And so here's the texture. If I was, if I were to um, knead it for another five minutes, it would be a lot smoother, but you know, this is good enough, right? It's got some give to it. It's not so sticky to the touch anymore. And so I'm just gonna put it back into the bowl. Now, if you have a stand mixer, then you just, throw everything into the stand mixer and whip it up on high speed for two or three minutes and then you're good to go. But um, just depends on what you have at home. So I'm going to let this rest. I'll put a lid on it and I'll leave it on the counter for eight hours. And then um, we'll come back and we'll start rolling out our pizzas. So see you soon. Time to roll out that dough. So it looks pretty good. It's nice and light. And also, it's only been uh, six hours. So I cut a couple hours off. So I was confident that it's going to work out. If you need more time or um, or if you forget about it for a while, no big deal. Probably better off. But it rose quite a bit, and I was content with it. So this dough will make um, probably four uh, individual piece uh, pizzas or six little baby ones. So that way everybody in the house, they can uh, make their own. So I'm just gonna divide it into quarters. And set the quarters aside and just work it with one at a time on a very lightly floured surface. All right, so um, now there's, huh, I am uh, by no means a, uh, a pizza dough aficionado. So um, you can poke it out with your fingers. You can kind of slap it around how professionals do it. I don't know how they do it. Um, but basically we're just stretching a little bit, leaving kind of like a, a little rim or a lip at the edge so that we can have a crust. And mine is never circular and that's okay, right? So your pizza is gonna love you no matter what. So I, I like a, a medium crust thickness personally and I'm okay with this. So what I'll do is I will bring over my baking sheet so that you can see it. Ooh, loud noise. Okay. Um, and I'm just gonna reshape it a bit. Mine tend to be rectangular in nature because well that's the size of pan that I'm working with. So I'm gonna get two on each one of these baking trays. And then I'll just dress this one for you. And you can use um, whatever you want. You can use a pizza sauce if you have it, or if you don't have a pizza sauce, you can use pasta sauce. Or if you wanna just go get fancy like me right now, I'm using um, a canned bruschetta. Oh, hey, first of all, let's address the issue of soggy crust. Just uh, a light coating of olive oil. 
You can brush it around with your fingers or if you have a brush, just do a little light coat of olive oil on the bottom and then that will help the crust stay kind of crispy, especially in the center when it can kind of get soggy and weighed down from the toppings. All right, so now, now it's time to dress. So, uh, everybody wants to load up their pizzas because toppings are great and uh, more is better, right? But not really in this case. Um, if we add a lot of toppings, it will make it more difficult for the crust to cook through. So you just end up with crispy crust on the outside and then kind of uh, soggy bottom. You know, if that's your jam, then you go for it. But I know the temptation is large to load it up. Um, and you do what you want, but I won't. So um, toppings can, you can choose whatever the hay you want. I've got a mixture of things right here. I kind of like to mix all my things together. So I have a little olive oil, salt, and pepper on it too. I've just got mushrooms, zucchini, onion, no I don't, um, artichokes, and olives. And then that way I feel like everything gets distributed pretty well. Seasoned. And again, do your best to try to not overload it too much. I'm going to stop there. And if you want cheese, I'm going to suggest you put the cheese on when it's done. So now my oven is screaming hot right now. So we're talking like 500 degrees, or if you don't feel comfortable bumping your oven to that hot, um, 475 or 500 if you want. But um, yeah, I've lightly greased the pan so it won't stick so bad, badly. And then we'll just stick it in the oven, watch it. Like check it after five minutes, have a look at the crust, see what you like. And then if you are a cheese eater, then put your cheese on after five minutes and then stick it in the oven for another three to four minutes until it's uh, to your doneness. All right, so we'll catch up with you after I uh, bake them. Turned out pretty well. Have a look, I'll cut it for you. But it's got a chewy center and a crispy crust. If you like it very, very thin, I suggest rolling it out with a, uh, a rolling pin or something like that. Um, but if you like it thicker, then just don't um, spread it out as wide. And you know, you can put the toppings however you wish. I made one that I kind of pre-baked the crust and then I topped it with hummus and some roasted um, butternut squash and onion. And you know, if if the Germans, if in Germany they can canned tuna and corn on their pizza and in Italy if they can put french fries and hot dogs on their pizza you can do whatever the hay you want with yours so um, I'd love to see what creations you all come up with and all of the creative and interesting toppings that you choose to put on yours so I hope you share that with us tag us um, and uh, I hope to catch you for the next recipe enjoy